Hey everyone, welcome to Audio Architects. My name's Mike. I'm gonna be taking you on quite the journey today. So before I do that, if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining me. Make sure after this video, you check out more of my other content. If you really dig it, I would love for you to subscribe. Thank you again for joining me and let's get on with the show. Okay, so what do I have pre-planned for you today? I have a Boulder 866 integrated amplifier that I'm gonna be hooking up, firing up, and listening to, and letting you know exactly my thoughts on the whole experience itself. I'm gonna take you step-by-step step on each part of the process, so if you ever are in the position that you want to try one of these out or buy one, you kinda have an idea of what to expect, that way you can prepare for it. The unboxing was actually quite exciting, once I got it open, it was really an incredible experience to, to not only like hold something uh, of this kind of caliber, but just check out the aesthetics and, and just checking out the, uh, just the way it was designed. It was mind blowing. The design and the aesthetics were absolutely mind blowing. So that's something that already right off the bat, right out of the gate, stood out to me about Boulder was how incredibly bold they are, you know? So being from Denver, I, it was it just made sense for me to work with Boulder. I'm really glad that we were able to work this out and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, super happy to do this because Boulder Amplifiers is, you know, basically the Ferrari of home audio. So let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, I'm gonna show you how to hook it up, what cables I'm gonna use, what source I'm gonna use, and what speakers I'm gonna pair it with. I'm gonna dive a little deeper than usual on the source cables and the pairings because I feel that's very, very important when you're putting together a high-end, high-quality system. Let's get started. So for this project, I'm gonna be using Audience AV cables. Audience AV is an awesome company out of San Marcos, California that handcrafts high-performance audio components. Anywhere from speaker cables, interconnects, power conditioning, surge protection, you name it, they got it. Definitely check them out and I'll put their info in the description below. So let's go ahead and start off with the interconnect. This is an RCA to XLR. It's from their AU24SX line, which is their second to top tier line. What they're using in these cables is 6.9 OCC copper and a high quality XLPE dielectric insulation. There's a lot that goes into their design and engineering. I definitely trust them because they do put out a really good product and I've been using them for quite some time. Okay, next let's talk about the speaker cables. The speaker cables I ordered are from the same line, the AU24SX, and they have spade connectors. Now, the reasoning behind the spade connectors is, is because the Boulder 866 only accepts spade connectors. So I had to take that in consideration because all of my other speaker cables had banana plugs anticipating a five-way binding post. So no problem at all. We went ahead and ordered the spade connector speaker cable from audience and it came out right away okay before we get to the big boy we're gonna go ahead and talk about the audio quest carbon optical cable i went ahead and grabbed this because unfortunately audience av at the moment does not offer an optical cable however i wanted to go with something a little bit more high end so i went with the carbon line from audio quest now this is going to go into the boulder 866 from all of my sources to test out how well the dac in the boulder 866 does that way i have a cool comparison between the dac in my other sources and the dac that is provided in the 866. now time for the big boy this right here from the same line the au24sx is the power cord. This power cord is absolutely massive. It's beautiful. There's so many adjectives I could use to describe this thing. However, I think this is pure and utter quality. This is a very heavy duty. You can't really bend it too much, not that you would want to. Um, I mean, the design, the aesthetic is just gorgeous audience really really outdid themselves on this one i mean it is just a beautiful beautiful looking cable 
Um, I'm very excited to be plugging this into not only the Boulder 866, but my future components as well. All right, now that you know how I'm gonna be plugging everything up, let's go ahead and talk about sources. All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about sources. I'm really excited because we're almost at that point where we get to fire it up and test it out. So for sources, I'm gonna be using three separate sources. I'm gonna be using my Sony SACD player, my Blue Sound Node 2i, as well as using the Boulder 866 as a Rune endpoint. So I've recently added a Rune core into my home PC, which has been working very, very well. I'm really impressed with Rune, and if you'd like to see a video on how to set it all up, I'll go ahead and link one right over here. So you could check that out, so that way you can learn how absolutely easy it is to set up Rune within your household. So what I'm actually really excited about is to see the difference between the DAX in the Sony CD player and the Blue Sound Note 2i and how they compare to the DAC inside the Boulder 866. I mean, I, I honestly know there's not gonna be any comparison. However, I'm, you know, curiosity's kind of tickling me. So I wanna know what the actual audible difference is going to be and if it's going to be an absolutely abnormal amount of difference. So now that you know what source I'm gonna use, Let's find out what speakers I'm gonna use. The first speaker we're gonna be using to test out the Boulder 866 is the Q Acoustics Concept 300, which is their flagship stand mount speaker. I think it's really rad because it looks absolutely phenomenal, very clean, smooth, gloss finish, and it definitely outperforms expectations. All right, guys, check out this clip where I show you how I hook everything up. Aside from the Q Acoustics Concept 300s, I also tried the Boulder with a pair of Aperion Audio Varus 3 Grand Towers as well as a pair of Dolly Oberon 3s, all of which performed very, very well. They each had their own character and particular sound, so they didn't all obviously sound the same because they were different speakers, but I thought they all sounded very good with their own characteristics that they already had. So now that you know how I connected the boulder and what I had connected it to, it's time to finally tell you what I thought of it. Right off the bat, look at that design. I mean, from the sloping front to the heat, to the staggered heat sinks, to, you know, the, the beautiful screen, the beautiful touch screen, the unit truly exudes the feeling of owning something very special. As some of you may already know, Boulder makes their amps in-house in Louisville, Colorado, formerly in Boulder, which is where they got their name. So at least you have the peace of mind that there's a team of engineers and a production team sitting in Louisville, Colorado, building this amp for you. It's not coming from anywhere else in the world. Every last component is made in-house. So let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about the looks. First thing that caught my eye was that sloping front panel. The buttons to the right of the touchscreen are for power, volume, and mute. Simple. Love it. The touchscreen allows you to configure all of your settings, switch inputs, and when playing from my room core, it shows off the album art. It's a very nice screen, and the software that they provide for your mobile app, either iOS or Android, works seamlessly. But that's not why we're here, right? We all know it looks good, but how does it sound? Well, as always, I went through an entire playlist. I dug really deep on this one because I really wanted to throw everything I could at this boulder. I wanted to run this boulder through the gauntlet. I tested it at many different volumes using many different genres. I even asked a good friend of mine to come over and listen to her favorite kind of music and here's what she thought. Okay, so you just had a chance to hear the Q Acoustics Concept 300s, the Velodyne DD Plus 12, 
all powered with the Boulder 866 amp. So what did you think of the Concept 300s and how they did with, because you were mostly EDM, a fan of EDM. Absolutely. So <laughs> what, 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 what did you think? First impression. Oh, wow. That was like me being there. That was the closest thing I've gotten to a concert since 2020. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. So you're digging it. Oh, absolutely. How did every, the speakers do with all the, the highs and the oh, lows? Oh, phenomenal. You can hear every single movement and every single aspect of the music. I can hear ups and downs. I can hear noises that I did not even hear before in that song. So that is amazing. <laughs> wow. So you're really, it looks like you're really moved by yeah, it. Yeah, that's emotional. awesome. I can't quit smiling. That makes me very happy. <laughs> it makes me very happy that the system made you very happy. But so... You know, so this is something that hits hard for you because you, before, you know, all this had happened, you went to a lot of concerts and stuff, yes. right? Yes, I did. A ton. All the time. <laughs> so you feel having maybe something like this in your, in your situation? Absolutely. I would, I would absolutely pay the money to have this in my house in this type of situation <laughs> and, um, of course well thanks libby for yeah. being a part of this video absolutely. and hopefully you'll come back and hear more stuff uh, yeah <laughs> all, right. all right bye honestly i gotta agree with Liv. it's only rated at 200 watts per channel and even at high high volumes i didn't hear any hesitation i didn't hear any distortion it was absolutely clean clear beautiful sound. The DAC inside of the Boulder 866 completely, completely outperformed the DAC inside the Node 2i, the DAC inside my CD player. It just, I mean, it was a, a, an extreme audible difference. It, it was just, the clarity was better. The, uh, you know, the sound stage was better. Everything was better. Like the bass response, everything, everything, everything. So rest assured the 866, has an amazing DAC inside of it and it worked very, very well. So, you know, I might actually encourage you guys, if you guys are using a music streamer, definitely plug in through optical because I mean, unless you're doing a, an external DAC that's really, really good, that would be the only scenario, a DAC that's better that's in the 866. That's the only scenario where I would go in through analog, but I mean, if you're not using an external DAC that, that can match that, Definitely optical. Now let me address one important thing that I have discovered in my journey with high-end audio. You guys in high-end audio don't like to use tone control and now I can finally see why. For the longest time, I was a huge, the biggest proponent of tone control. And I, I can see now why I got scoffed at a little bit by the higher-end crowd. I might be losing you some of you here, but try to follow along real quick. What I discovered is that every single element and component in your system can either have a slight or even dramatic change in the character of the music you're listening to. Whether it's your source, room treatments, a particular brand or style of cabling, speakers, and obviously amplification. And that is how in the high-end world, people are able to manipulate their tone is by using different types of components. This is how it gets expensive, guys. This is how you dig yourself in this rabbit hole where it's an expensive and addicting hobby because you want to kind of hear and see what the next component will do, what the next source will do, what the next you know um, room treatment you do will do, what the next speakers you get will do, and how it will all work together to have that perfect balance. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that perfect balance that when you hear the music in your ears, you're like, okay, that is my sweet spot. That is what I like, that's what I love. And it's gonna take some time for a lot of people to find that sweet spot, but I guarantee you it, it exists out there somewhere, but you gotta dig deep and find it. And it's not a bad idea to start with speakers and amplification, but I digress. So to sum up the performance of the Boulder 866, I was very impressed. It actually exceeded any and all expectations I had, and it was an eye-opening experience to learn so much about hi-fi from this journey I took with the Boulder 866. I believe this unit brought a very balanced and accurate reproduction of the original recording in a very effortless way. I wanna thank a few people. I wanna thank Steven Logan over at Boulder for providing me with the opportunity to review and experience and live with this product for a little while. It was a great, great experience for me. I also wanna give a huge thank you to Jeff over at Soundings locally in Denver because you, my friend, <laughs> opened my eyes to a whole new world of hi-fi and I appreciate that. And I, of course, I cannot leave out 
John over at Audience AV and Nick at Q Acoustics for providing me with the speakers and the cables to make it all work very well together. It was a great pairing with all of those elements. If you're interested in learning more about Boulder, I encourage you to check out the links in the description below. I will be including all their info. So if you have any questions or anything, either contact me or contact them and we'll all be more than happy to help you out and help you learn more about the company. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the content, I encourage you all to definitely smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get notified every time I put out new content. And in a couple weeks, I'm going to show you guys the review of the Q Acoustic Concept 300s, which I'm super excited to finally release. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week.